Anybody ever heard of data before? Just a few of you? OK. Well, yeah, I, I want to thank you, first of all, for having me here. I've, I've enjoyed the entire set of presentations today, starting even with the Ebola presentation and you know, hearing about the challenges of PPE. I happen to do medical response at rock concerts. So I also understand the challenge of PPE. So it's good to hear that. We heard from folks in the security world. And hopefully, you're all plenty frightened now about all the security challenges out there. So I'm not going to talk about that. We would heard about the virtual world and you know, kind of liquid technology and living up in the cloud. I'm hopefully not going to send you up in the cloud through my talk. So we're going to try to avoid that. And then I guess thirdly, I would tell you is I'm definitely not going to dance for you. My wife will be the first one to tell you I have absolutely no rhythm whatsoever. So we won't try that either. What I will do, though, is I will do probably quite a bit of follow-up to what Terry had to talk about. And Terry did a fantastic job of giving about 50% of my presentation, which is about data. And that's what I'm here to talk to you today about, is data. So the first question we, we have to ask ourselves is, you know, what is all this data? This data is essentially not as complicated as you think. It's all different kinds of data. When, when big data first started, a lot of people thought it was all about unstructured data, you know, video files, voice files, social media data, all these different data types that were out there. And if you roll the clock forward, what it's really about, and you can see from this chart, it's all your data. It's structured data and unstructured data. In fact, about 80% of the world's data is unstructured, but the 20% of the world's data that's highly structured, most of you in the room can't do very much with it. And one of the reasons you can't do very much with it is because you can't bring it together. So what's causing the headache? Well, part of the headache is caused by confusion. So if we look and we say, well, why is there confusion out there? Well, number one, there's a lot of products. So MarkLogic happens to be in the NoSQL database market. We are one of 200 products roughly in the marketplace. So you only have to pick one out of 200 to get started on your project. Now, what's interesting about it is, well, one out of 200, and you say, OK, well, that makes it pretty daunting right, right up there. Well, why is there 200? Well, the venture capitalists had a view that says, if we fund it, we can fund it. There's going to be a media frenzy around funding. So you've heard about all 200 products, because they've all been at all the trade shows. But then if you actually add them all up and you look at their net results, we're pretty much bigger than the sum of all those players in the marketplace. And there's a reason for that. And you know, one of the reasons is the confusion factor again. So what's going on in the market? What's another reason you're confused? Well, there's lots of different technologies out there. So we have Oracle. Anybody ever heard of Oracle? No? OK. I can't see anything out there. I think you've heard other speakers mention that. It's, it's blinding lights up here. So we have this Oracle database. And their answer to the big data was, just do what Oracle always says to do, put it all in an Oracle database, we do it all. So that's what the vast majority of shops have tried to do. Then Hadoop came along, and Hadoop, real important technology, Hadoop came along and created the notion of a data lake. And a data lake was really good for your analytics. The only problem with it is as you built your data lake is every time you wanted to go out on the lake, you had to build a boat. And it became complicated to get value back out of that data. We had technologies like Click and Tableau and others doing simple analytics. So one of the definitions of big data became, oh, well, I can do simple analytics. Those tools do a really good job of simple analytics. Put those on top of your Hadoop system, you've got a very capable capability technology stack to go do simple analytics. So that was all good. And then, again, we had the venture community. Does anybody remember, and since Terry already um, established that we're all a geriatric audience out here, I don't have to reestablish that. But uh, you know, by, by confession, I did come from the mainframe era, so you'll hear me reference the mainframe a couple times. But I guess I'm curious if um, anybody ever heard the concept in the bubble, the tech bubble, of monetizing eyeballs. Well, that's what's happening in the venture community again. The view is, if we fund it, there must be, it must be real and it must be value out there. And so it's created all this hype. And what you've had to do as customers and as users of these technologies is you've had to try to look beyond the hype factor. So how do we look behind the hype factor? We have to look at what the real problem is. 
And the real problem is that integrating data is really difficult. Even if you have four Oracle systems, it's very hard to integrate four Oracle systems back into traditional database technology. That's just a difficult problem. You have to make all the tables from all four databases all look like a master view of that database. And that's a very difficult problem to solve. So what did we do? We brought in the ETL companies, extraction, transformation, load companies. They're going to transform all your data so you can do something with it. Now, the only problem with that model is if your data changes, you have to rewrite your transformation layer. If your, transfer, if your application needs change, what you want to do with the data changes, guess what you have to do? Rewrite the transformation layer. So imagine for a second if you were Google. And imagine that when Google was creating the Google system, they went out in the marketplace and they said, we'll tell you what, we'll integrate your data and make it all searchable, and we'll be able to search your website as soon as you match the specification in this format for your data. So you fix the format so we can look at it universally. If that was the case, I wouldn't be talking about Google because nobody would know who Google is. They would still be waiting for the millions and millions of sites to go out there and change all their web systems so that you could actually look at the data. So essentially, there's different ways to do, solve this problem. What Google did is they said, well, we'll just go index and search it. And when you add pages to your website, Google doesn't call you up and say, can you send that to me? Google doesn't call you up and says, can you reformat it for me? So when we talk about data sharing between agencies, data sharing between groups and a company, all of a sudden, you know, what we do in the corporate world is we say, yeah, make it look like this and I can share it with you. So data integration was really, really a difficult problem. So agility was also pretty critical. Why did we move off the mainframe, since we're a geriatric audience? Why did we move off the mainframe? Because it lacked agility. It became very expensive. It took years to get an application. You had to go to the user group. You had to talk to the user group. They give you a spec for the application. You go off and you code your COBOL application. Five years later, you come back and you give the application to the user. And five years later, they say, well, that's really not what I needed anymore. And you go back into an iterative cycle again. In a funny way, the relational world has moved to the same world, the same relational databases, Oracle, DB2, SQL Server. I'm not going to pick on any of them. They all have the same fundamental problem now. In order to build those applications, you have to do this massive structure called a schema. You have to build this big structure out of your data. It's very, very fixed. And then your users have to build applications on it. And what happens if your data changes? You go in there and you change the database. You rewrite all the applications so that they can access that new data, and then you start all over again. Well, that's not agile enough. The world is changing every day. Every day, something's changing. Your data is changing every day. Even companies in the corporate world that thought, well, I'm insulated from that because I'm not doing mergers. Well, I have one customer that started out down that path. They have 200 different HR systems, 200. The project we're doing for them, bring all the data together so they can have a single view of their employee. They don't have enough time to do a 10-year ERP consolidation to consolidate 200, ER, 10, 10, 200 HR data feeds. They don't have enough time. There's not enough time to go do a big ERP consolidation of that. So what we're doing is we're just taking all the data out and we're essentially putting the data in a Mark Logic system and making it immediately searchable. So in a funny way, relational has become just like the mainframe. Applications are taking a long time to build. Uh, they're not flexible at all. Changes are very difficult. Oh, by the way, the cost got pretty expensive too. If you look at some of your agreements that you have out there, that became kind of out of control. Um, yeah, I, I spent, you know, by confession, I'm a data guy. I've been in the da data industry for years. I spent 14 years of my career at Oracle. Now, I've been gone as long as I was there. But in, in my Oracle career, Larry always had a dream. He was always jealous of IBM. Some of you may not know that. He was jealous of IBM because they had a fully integrated stack. And he always picked on IBM because his fully integrated stack at IBM, their fully integrated stack included what at the foundation? A proprietary mainframe. Well, I would argue if you look at the Oracle stack today, 
you have a, full, a, a fully integrated vertical stack, and at the heart of it is a proprietary mainframe, it's just called a Sun Machine. So in a funny way, the relational vendors, the traditional vendors are suffering from the same problem IBM suffered from, is that in order to give you agility, they have to change their whole business model, and it's very difficult to go do that. So that's what opened up the market for new kinds of te technologies and different technologies. So what's it causing? That's causing a generational shift in database technology. There's a whole new generation of technologies coming out. And there really are two primary kinds of new generation data technologies. One of them that we support and one of them that we provide. The one that we support is the Hadoop. Hadoop is a great way to bring data together to do relatively simple analytics. But for most of you, there's a, a bigger goal and there's things you need to do beyond simple analytics. You probably need to build systems that don't look much different than what you did on the mainframe and probably don't look much different than what you did in your traditional Oracle or DB2 environment, meaning you have to build operational systems. So if you have to both integrate data, bring it together, and build new generations of applications based on all your data in a single view of your data, then NoSQL databases come into play. And in particular, what we did is we focused on the enterprise needs because we don't believe that in today's world, you just put data out there that's not gonna be secure, that's not gonna be backed up, that's gonna be transactionally inconsistent. We believe the enterprise is required. So MarkLogic became the enterprise NoSQL provider which is why we've become the biggest provider in the marketplace. All those same things you had to have on the mainframe. When I was early on at Oracle, and Oracle is about the size MarkLogic was when I joined, at that point in time, you know, my comment, being a mainframe guy at Oracle, a little bit of a fish out of water at the time, was until you have backup, until you have security, until you have high availability, mainframe customers are not gonna move off of it. The same is true with this generational shift as well. As we move from traditional relational technology to NoSQL technology, you have to have all the security and all those capabilities. They have to come with it. And that's what MarkLogic has been offering. Data integration with results. What does that mean? How many IT projects fail? You just saw the list. You, know, you saw all kinds of quotes about projects failing. Projects take a long time to fail, typically. And so the nice part of this new technology stack is you get results very quickly. Since we're not gonna transform all your data, we're just gonna ingest all your data in as is, you're gonna know pretty quickly whether the application works or not. And the best way that I can explain that to you is give you a good example of what I mean about an agile development environment. Anybody here heard about Obamacare? Come on, in this building? I think everybody's heard of it. So healthcare.gov, you've heard it mentioned actually a couple times today. MarkLogic is actually the database that's underneath both the marketplace and we're also the database for the data, the data services hub, IRS, immigration, and, and other data that comes in credit data that all the state exchanges in the federal marketplace. The way that transaction was won by MarkLogic, we took three states' data, we came in in about 10 weeks, talked about prototypes in the last presentation, and in about 10 weeks we prototyped a marketplace with three states' data. They were two and a half years into using relational technology on that project and they didn't have a schema. They didn't even have a data definition yet to define how all that data was gonna come from thousands and thousands of insurance companies. There was no standard format to bring all that data together. In the data services hub, the IRS, the credit agencies, the border patrol, they didn't all get together in a room like this and say, let's create a, da a standard data format. In fact, what the legislators did is they said, there's a fixed date, you're gonna have a marketplace, that marketplace is gonna be live and you're gonna enroll users. And I remember, you know, and it's, it clearly it started out with some challenges. I remember coming back to my hotel here in DC. We had been in a meeting that went till about 11.30 at night with Todd Park, CTO of the White House at the time. And I turned on the TV, I'm a little wired after that meeting. We're talking about how to now run an operational system. By the way, contracts came to MarkLogic just over a year before open enrollment started. So that marketplace was put together very, very rapidly. The hardware is put together very rapidly, and as we know, hardware, network, storage caused a lot of challenges. We had a pretty fragile infrastructure. But I come back to my hotel room, a little wired from the meeting, turn on the news, Lou Dobbs is on. And Lou is up there telling, telling the world, how hard is it to run a website? 
I'm thinking to myself, this is not a website. This is a pretty complex operational system. We took data from thousands of public and private insurers, from all these different agencies. We brought it all together. We're not selling used toilets on Craigslist. We're signing people up for insurance. Ultimately, that system did scale up for peak periods. We're going to start open enrollment again. They had much higher workloads, I suspect, in the next couple of weeks. At peak period, 150,000 concurrent sessions on that system, 50,000 transactions a second. That's what I mean by large-scale operational systems. And you really do need to build large operational systems. It's no different than if I'm Deutsche Bank and I'm building a global trade store, or if I'm an insurance company that has 200 HR systems and needs to bring it together. So what I would challenge you with here today, and, and I'll wrap up here, is, is, is your data a catalyst, or has integration become an obstacle? And my guess is that if you look at the heart of every data project that you're working on, what you're going to find is heterogeneous data. And what this new generation of NoSQL technology is really, really powerful at doing is building complex operational systems. Don't throw away your enterprise requirements. Complex operational systems on very, very heterogeneous data. And if you can bring, you know, just put on your, your hat of imagination here as you walk out at the end of the day and ask yourself, well, if I could really bring all that data together, what could I accomplish to help achieve my mission, my goals, my objectives for your particular organization? Thank you very much.